Okay, good morning everyone. It is my joy to share the word with you this morning. How good was it to listen to Rollin last week, huh? Yes. Yeah, nice, na? That was so good. I think I was thoroughly, I think, no, I know I'm thoroughly, I was thoroughly, hey, can you take this out? I'll start playing this in the middle there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was very blessed with what he shared and for those of you who didn't hear it, uh, please go to our YouTube. We have a Spotify also, just saying, and you can find all the messages there. We will be continuing from the parables this morning. We will look at the parable of the talents. So let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 as Shana will read it out for us. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also, he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received that one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you, del you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He, oh, he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you speak to us uh, through your word, Lord. And your word is alive, uh, Lord. And these are not any, some dead phrases written uh, years back. Uh, uh, these, these, are, these are words that are living. These are words that can change us. These are words that can speak into our situations, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your call and your, your uh, just your grace upon our life, Lord. We are... Uh, nothing without you, Lord Jesus. Everything that we have is because of you. And we want to give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord Jesus. This morning as we come to your word, I pray that you will keep our eyes open to see, our ears open to hear, our minds open to understand, and our hearts open to receive what you have for us this morning. I make this man Jesus' most precious and only name. Amen. So, context, background of this parable. This parable starts with, for it will be. This means that there is some context to uh, you know, this passage that we need to know of. What is this it? What is this it in for it will be? Chapters 24 and 25 in that sense, uh, in the book of Matthew, are Jesus' last sermons or teachings, you know, to his, uh, uh, to his disciples and to the people who are constantly following him from one place to another. What prompted this series of teachings is a question that was asked in Matthew 24 verse 3. They say, tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So this parable is a part of Jesus' response to this question. Yeah. So we can effectively replace the for it will be with, uh, probably this, this parable can also start with saying, the sign of my coming and uh, the end of the age will be like a man going on a journey. Okay. This parable 
uh, was said with that intention and should be read and understood in the context of Jesus' second coming and the end times. Yeah, everyone is clear? Jesus here is also talking about his imminent crucifixion, his death and his resurrection. Jesus predicted, he told his death to his disciples thrice in the books of uh, uh, Matthew, Mark and Luke. If I, yeah, Matthew, Mark and Luke. They knew uh, uh, what he was talking about, but I don't think they fully understand uh, w- 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 you know, what he meant with everything that he was saying. Now, there's a lot in this parable for us to take. It's a very long parable. But I don't want to lose the forest for the trees. So let's get right into it. Okay, Verse 14. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, and to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Okay, what is a talent? I know most of us over here... Many of us have been in church long enough to know that this talent is not the English word talent, okay, how we use it today. Uh, but talent is a form of unit, okay, uh, is, a, is a form or unit of currency or weight, okay. So talent could either be currency or it could be weight. Now, currency wise, one talent, okay, be prepared to learn new words if you have not heard these before. One talent was worth 60 minas. Or minas, not mean, not mean anti, minas. Okay, it is a it is a form of currency. Okay, like how we have rupee and pesa, sixty minas. One mina was worth hundred dinarai. One dinarai was worth a day's wages. Yeah. Okay. So one talent, one talent was worth six thousand uh, denarius or wages for six thousand days of work. You know how many days of work that is? That is sixteen point five years worth of wages. Okay, according to the latest survey done in Mumbai, I didn't even do anything and she started crying. Okay, yeah, six years. <laughs> according to the latest survey done in Mumbai, okay, the average salary in Mumbai, I don't know how they got to this rate, probably the Ambani's completely ruined the entire survey, but the average salary in Mumbai is 10 lakhs per annum. Okay, that is roughly about 85,000. Uh, 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 80, 12, 9, yeah, 85,000 per month, okay? That means if Jesus, okay, was talking about currency over here, that means the value of one talent would have been approximately, okay, it would have been approximately 1 crore 65 lakhs, okay? If I tell you I'm giving you 1 crore 65 lakhs today, how many of you would take it? All those who didn't put up your hand, I have 1 crore 65 lakhs, but you're not getting anything. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So by that calculation, (laughs) Google. Okay. (laughs) That means the first, the first servant got roughly around 8 crores. Okay. The second servant got about 3 point some crores and the third servant obviously he got the 1.6 crores that is a lot of money now if Jesus was talking about weight okay so when you talk about weight one talent in weight is approximately 29 kilos of gold or silver 29 kilos of gold or silver because my man my mind cannot fathom how much 29 kilos of gold will be worth I have gone with silver over here, okay? And also because currency, generally silver, okay? So, and that is what most commentators say. You know what is the price of silver today in Bombay? The price of silver today in Bombay is about 96,000 rupees, okay? That is, that is one kg of silver, okay? That is 96,000 rupees. That means one talent would have been worth 28 lakh rupees, Yeah? That means the first servant got about 1.5 crores, the second one got 56 lakhs and the third one got 28 lakhs. Okay, for those of you who think that is less money, it is not. Okay, now you need to understand we are talking about today's values as compared to Uzdinka values. Yeah, the value of money today versus the value of money then. Now, 
I don't know whether Jesus was referring to currency or weight in this parable, but I believe it was both for those who understood talent as currency, for those who understood talent as weight, whatever unit he was referring to, the bottom line what he was getting to is that the master left them with a lot of money. Okay, it is a lot of money that the master left him with. Okay, and I've gone through all of this just for you and me to understand, just for us to understand and grasp how much money the master left with these servants. This wasn't giving the servants yellow patches are rupiah till I come back. Okay, this was a lot of money. This was a lot of money. So what do these talents represent? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, what these talents represent are manifold, but the most common and the most acceptable understanding of these, understanding of these talents is, is, is that these represent gifts, skills and abilities that God has given us. Okay, now R.T. Kendall says that these talents, they represent the anointing God has given his people. Okay, what is anointing? Anointing is simply gifting or skill plus responsibility. Okay, that is the anointing. Let's try and unpack that a bit. Everyone, okay, everyone, whether they are Christian or they are not Christian, are blessed with skills and gifts. You agree? Yes. Yes, good. Okay, this is, is, this is something called common grace. Okay, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not a Christian, God's grace is available for everyone. Yeah, now some people are excellent speakers, some people are excellent singers. They are not followers of Christ, but they are so talented. And that is because God has given them that talent. Yeah, God's grace extends to all. Psalms 145 verse 9 says, the Lord is good to all. Okay. Not just Christian, he is good to all. And his mercy is over all that he has made. Okay? Everyone. Everyone is a benefactor of the grace of God. Yeah? We are alive today because of the grace of God. This earth as it is exists and stands today because of the grace of God. Do you know, I was reading something very uh, interesting that day. The sun, okay, the sun. If the sun was... Uh, Half a kilometer, even half a kilometer closer, not even half a kilometer, sorry. If it was 50 meters or, five, or, or, or some, uh, I don't know the exact number, but if it was, it is under half a kilometer closer to the earth, we would have all burned. Do you know that? We would have all died. Yeah? Okay. Also the sound, the sound that the sun makes, it would have driven us insane. It is like listening to a hundred jackhammers going on together. Okay. And the problem is, you know, light travels faster than sound. Okay. So the sound of the jackhammers would go on. And eventually when the sun would die, if the sun would ever die, if the sun would lose its light, the light would go away. Life as we know it, okay, would start to, would start to get, what do you say, would start to uh, uh, yeah, perish because we need the sun for life. But the sound would still take 18 years. That sound of a dying sun would still take 18 years. Because that's how much time it takes. Do you know that? The earth is made in a way, it is made so perfectly by God. And that is why I think if anyone asks you about why do you believe in a God, it has to be intelligent design. This cannot be chance. This cannot be chance. Yeah. So, so and, as, as, uh, and, and, and it's because of God's grace, the sun is exactly where it is supposed to be and it doesn't come closer, it doesn't go further. Yeah. Everyone, everyone benefits from this grace of God. Now, when you and I, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God uses these skills and gifts for His purposes. Yeah, heavenly responsibility is added to these skills. Okay, okay. He calls us to use uh, these skills for His purposes and His glory. Besides our natural skills and gifts, there are also gifts given to us by the Holy Spirit, and these gifts are specially, uh, specifically for the building. And to serve the church. Yeah? Okay? There is wisdom. There is knowledge. There is prophecy. We can read the whole list in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7. To add to this, there are more gifts mentioned in Romans 12 verse 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 26 to 31. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 16. These are a list of gifts that God blesses us with. Okay? That he gives us. Now, there are some of us who have multiple gifts. Right? Like Joash, he can sing. He can play the guitar. He can preach. He can lead. Multi-talented, right? Okay. Some of us, we may have only one gift. But 
whether you have many gifts or you have just one gift okay it is our responsibility to serve god with that gift okay it is our responsibility to use it for the kingdom of christ paul asked timothy in 2 timothy 1 verse 6 to fan into flame the gift of god which was in him okay these talents and skills that god has blessed us with this is to glorify him in the parable once the owner was back he asked them for an account of these talents yeah which means the owner expected the servants to put this to use okay i i don't know how many of you all know this but you and i as much as god loves us and there is grace and all of that you and i will have to give an account of what we have done with the talents that god has given us do you know that i'm not making this up romans 14 verse 12 and 2 corinthians 5 verse 10 says that when we reach heaven jesus is going to ask us hey i gave you this skill i gave you this talent what have you done with it yeah he's going to ask us we need to be like the good and faithful servants who put those talents to use and we need to reap kingdom benefits from it yeah because we will be asked an account of what we have done now even though this talent represents gifts calling anointing uh, these talents could also be symbolic of other things that god has blessed us with okay since everything we have is from through and for him the principle of what he has given us okay uh, 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 you know it kind of applies to everything with our time relationships money jobs families you and i we are called to live well and we are called to use these things wisely okay all of this is given by god money i want to ask you brothers and sisters how do you use your money okay are you spending your money wisely okay if you if you invest are you investing your money wisely you know are you one of those who runs after pachis din mein paisa double you know there are these scams that are going on 25 days 100x never works i have not tried it huh? people have tried it i work too hard to put my money into something like that you know some people say that god will provide so they don't save i mean i admire your faith i think it's great but i think also it's slightly stupid okay yes god will provide but god has also provided for you now no he's provided for you now so that you can also save and keep for for, for the future yeah investing your money getting a return from your money is not a bad thing it is not against what god is saying it is not against what jesus is saying okay getting returns on your investment is also provision from god if god didn't protect our money our money would have gone and some of us must have been through it right some of us must have tried to make money super quickly and lost it yeah it's god who protects our money now there are people who save but then there is the uh, uh, sorry there are people who just spend their money without abandon i'm something like that yeah sometimes but then there is the other end of the spectrum which is hoarding okay they keep saving i want to save everything i want to save everything are you are you are, you know ask yourself am i a hoarder do i like to save everything keeping it all to ourselves are we large hearted or are we under the guise of oh you know i'm saving oh i'm prudent we become kanjus that two spectrums how well and often do we tithe very important question i think one of the best investments we can make is into the kingdom of god okay and 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 this i know out of out of experience this i know out of personal experience i made a promise to god i followed through on it and god has not let me down since that day okay i've said it before also over here and i will say it again god has been immensely kind god has been at least 500 times kinder to me you know than what i have put in the kingdom of god in that sense i think god is extremely kind i know god is extremely kind we reap what we sow the more cheerfully and large heartedly we give the more god provides yeah and i know there are many over here who will stand testament to that fact the other thing that these talents could represent is time i am the biggest culprit of this okay trust me i don't think there is anyone here who knows to waste their time better than i can okay if you don't believe me ask asha she knows 
okay? I waste my time extremely well. I've got a PhD in it. If wasting time was an art, I am Michelangelo. Okay? But the Bible asks us to number our days. Psalms 90 verse 12. What do we spend our time on? Social media, movies, WhatsApp. I'm speaking all of this to me only. I'm not telling you. This is, this is more to me. There are plenty of enemies to our time. For our time. Okay. I'm not saying that these are bad things. These are good things. Okay. You can use it for good. But how much we use? How much do we use them? Do we let them dictate our lives? I know, I know there are moments when I, when I have. I was shocked to see that I used Instagram for six hours. I was like, what? What do I even do there? Just, chuk, 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 chuk. yeah, literally. Then so I, so I said, okay, fine, I'm not going to be on Instagram and I downloaded Ludo. I was like, four hours on Ludo? <laughs> Who spends four hours on Ludo? <laughs> but I guess, huh? Who? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are after Instagram, no. So much also, I don't waste my time. I think Franco bought a word last week. I don't know how many of you remember. Yeah? You remember that? You know, and he, and he spoke about time. And he said, let's give the best of our time to Jesus. And that, that really convicted me. Are we making the best use of our time? That is something God has given. And time is the only thing we cannot add to. Okay? You cannot buy more time. You cannot multiply your time. Time is what we just, God has numbered our days. That's how many days we have. Right? Okay. So, what do we do with our talents? The servants with five and two talents, they doubled what was given to them. They put that talent to use and it reaped rewards. Verse 16 and 17 says, the ones who got five and two talents went at once and traded with those talents. At once. They put it to use immediately. It's like money, right? The sooner you invest money, the more it will grow, right? That's just how it is. It is the same with our gifts and talents. The sooner you start functioning, the better you're going to get. Yeah? The more it grows. The sooner you put it to use, the more time we have to see it grow. I know I spoke about time just now, but time is so crucial. I need to stress on it again. Okay? Limited amount of time on this earth. So the sooner we get to operating and practicing our gifts and callings, the better it is. That, much, that is how much more time we'll have to operate in that, yeah? This, these two servants, they got to work immediately. They spend their time, their energy and focus and all their skill on utilizing these talents in the best way possible. We need to put our talents to use immediately. But for that you and I, we need to know what is the talent that God has given us? What is it that God has called you to? What is it that God has put inside you? For those of us who don't know what it is, what is it that you are naturally gifted in? There are high chances that your call and the gift that God has given you is closely related to that. High chances. I'm not saying it has to be that, but there are high chances. Yeah? And over and above that, God blesses us with you know the gifts of teaching, prophecy, wisdom. But... For you, if you feel that, oh, God has not given me anything. No, no, no. Please don't live in self-pity. There is gift, if not gifts, that God has put inside of you. Okay? That God has given you. Yeah? Whatever it is, it is of great significance. And God wants you and me to use it for His glory. Okay? If you don't know what your gift is, if you don't know what your talent is, come, talk to us. You can call Joash after 1 o'clock in the night. That's when he's... <laughs> No, no, please don't call him that late. Please don't call him that late. He goes to sleep. Okay. Please come talk to us. We would love to talk to you and help you figure out what it is that could probably be your calling. What it is that God has gifted you with. Yeah. There are tools. There are things that we can, you know, talk about, surveys, and we can find out. Okay. Why should we use our calling? Because there are rewards waiting for us. Okay. Both the servants were, they were commended by the master. The master tells them, well done. Yeah. What joy it is to hear from Jesus, well done. Yes. Imagine Jesus telling you and me, well done. Whew. That will be so amazing. 
not only that you know he blessed them with more responsibility they were given more talents to manage and handle and the most important thing the most beautiful thing this is what the parable says they entered the joy of the master how cool is that brothers and sisters whatever you and i do unto god in this life will reap many rewards okay in this life also i'm not saying that our life is going to be easy i'm not saying that it's going to be problem free okay because jesus has not said that you know he said in this world you will have many problems he said that but there are rewards waiting there are rewards in this life and most assuredly in the most assuredly in the life to come okay colossians 3 verse 23 to 24 says whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for human masters since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the lord as a reward this is an assurance god never lies the bible never lies right it is the lord christ you are serving there is an inheritance waiting for you and me brothers and sisters and just like the master told the servants jesus will tell you and me well done my good and faithful servants enter my joy i think this is the greatest thing we can receive from jesus entering his joy psalm 16 verse 11 says you make known to me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore Jesus' joy is complete. It has nothing lacking. It doesn't get over. It doesn't fade with time. It is complete. His joy is fully satisfying and sufficient. Enter his joy. Okay, things to be careful of. Okay, what does this parable tell us to be careful of? Three servants, but they are on two spectrums. Okay? two diverse spectrums and these spectrums are that of faith and of fear faith and fear okay the first two servants they showcased immense faith in their ability and knowledge of their master okay they got their share of the talents they put it to use with all the knowledge and ability that they had yeah they took responsibility for their master's money they treated the master's money and property as their own okay they took responsibility they got to work growing it they operated out of faith okay they held on to the fact that if they do this out of faith that good will happen okay they knew that the money will grow and it will benefit their master but the other servant the third servant okay the one who was given only one one talent he operated out of fear okay he done he didn't trust his master and neither did he trust himself okay so he didn't go and do anything about it he buried it in the ground he literally killed his ability and his call literally he kept it hidden in he kept it hidden in fear thinking that are what will happen if i mess up what will happen if this money becomes half the other two servants could have thought the same they probably had their doubts too are i am putting so much money what if i don't get it back but they operated in faith yeah 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 says where the spirit of the lord is there is there is freedom okay hebrews 11 verse 6 says without faith it is impossible to please god whatever gifts god has given you you must operate them in faith you cannot be living in fear okay what will happen will i fall no 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 don't think about all of that god has given god will sustain amen okay competition another thing we need to be wary of competition the master gave to each servant according to their ability okay please understand god gives us gifts according to our ability right some of us have more some of us have maybe just one okay but it is given according to our ability and we need to be faithful with that one as then maybe the master will give us more and even if he doesn't give us more we are going to enter the joy of the master just as with the guy who doubled the five talents okay the guy who doubled the five talents and the guy who doubled the two talents both went into the joy of the master yeah god is omniscient he knows the beginning from the end he knows he, he knows from beginning to end he knows exactly what is going to happen in his infinite wisdom he has given us our portion accordingly yeah with the servants the master knew exactly how much to give which servant imagine if he would have given five talents to the servant that he gave one to 
Can you imagine? But he didn't because he knows. Okay? So don't look at someone else and say, oh, you know what? They are so talented, yeah. I wish I was so talented. No, no, God has given you what is good for you. Maybe you can't handle all of it. I love music. Okay? I want to sing well, but I just can't sing to save my life. I look at EJ and I'm like, I wish I could sing like EJ. But God in His infinite wisdom has not given me the gift of singing. But He has given me other gifts that I need to be faithful to an outwork. Yeah? We can't look at what we don't have or what others have. We need to look at what we have. To each is given according to their measure of faith. Romans 12 verse 3. Okay? Now, those who have too many gifts, don't look down upon those who don't have many gifts. And please understand, the most important thing, brothers and sisters, the servants didn't have the talents, the master gave it to them. Whatever gifts you see in yourself and in others, it is not theirs, it is not yours. The master, the Lord has given it to you. Okay? You are not born with it because you are better than everyone else. He has in His grace given it to us. He has entrusted it to us. So we have to be good stewards of it and we don't have to be too proud of it. Many people use verse 30 in this parable to say that we can lose our salvation. Okay, what does it say? Okay, it says, Cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, a lot of people use this, this verse saying that this means a Christian can lose their salvation. Brothers and sisters, biblically, a Christian, and hear me very carefully, a true Christian cannot lose his salvation or her salvation. Okay? Now, why am I saying this? I'm not making this up. This is what the Bible says. I shared it the last time when we, sh- when, we, when, we, when we saw the parable of the fig tree. Romans 11 verse 29. The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Philippians 1 verse 6. He who began a good work in you will perfect it. Romans 8 verse 33. God justifies. Romans 8 verse 38 to 39. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Luke 15 verse 4 to 7. Jesus says, I will not lose a single sheep. Okay. It is not dependent on you or me. It is on Jesus. Salvation is to do with Jesus. And there is a reason why I use the word true Christian. Okay? Because there is a chance that someone may say that they are saved, but they are not saved. But you and I don't know that. Okay? One of the ways we could know how someone is saved is because the Bible says, we will know, you will know that they are my disciples by their fruit. Okay? By their fruit. Our salvation needs to outwork itself into good fruits. Okay? A Christian produces fruits. Okay? We are not saved by works, but we are saved to do good works. Yeah? We are saved for works. Right? We can see the Holy Spirit working in and through a, a Christian. A truly, a true Christian. Yeah? We can see the fruits. The spirit within us compels us to live a life that gives glory to God. Now, what does verse 30 mean in this context? Firstly, this parable doesn't talk about salvation. Jesus is not talking about salvation in this parable. Yeah, The talents in this parable don't represent salvation. You can argue with me and be like, Oh, you know, Errol, I don't think... It, it, represent, it represents gifts. I don't think it represents time. I don't think it represents money. You know, you could think it represents whatever. But I can most assuredly tell you, the talents in these parables, they do not represent salvation. You're with me? Yeah. No? Okay, EJ is with me. EJ, I'll do this for you. Okay? Okay. Now the reason why I say it is not salvation is because the master, he takes the third servant's talent and he gives it to the first servant. You cannot add salvation on salvation. There is no hyper salvation. But I'm pretty sure in five years there will be some prosperity preacher who will be like, hey, listen, if I get five private jets this year, you will get triple salvation. 
I'm pretty sure that is going to happen. But you cannot add salvation onto salvation. That is why this is not about salvation. Secondly, why the master said what he said. And the answer in that is in what the servant says in verses 24 and 25. He, say, he tells the master, okay, what the servant tells the master is like, Master, I knew you are, a hard, you are a hard man. You reap where you do not sow and you gather where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. What does that mean? It means that the servant didn't know his master. This is not talking about someone who is saved. Okay? He had a notion about his master which wasn't shared by the other two servants. If the master was actually what the, this third servant uh, uh, describes him as, the other two servants also would have been scared, right? But they weren't. And why would a hard master be so generous and give so much money? I wouldn't. Why would he do that? He could have invested the money himself. He could have put it in a business himself. Why did he give it to his servants? The reason why the master says what he says in verse 30 to the servant is, he judges the servant in proportion to the servant's faith and belief in who he is. The servant says, you are a hard man. The master says, well, you think I'm a hard man? This is it. This is not talking about losing our salvation. Verse 30 is essentially saying, if we do not take responsibility for the call that God has laid on our life, it will be taken away from us. Okay? We can lose our anointing. That is something we can definitely lose. Yeah? He'll take, he'll take our call, he can take our gift and he can give it to someone else. No one is indispensable. No one. Okay? If we do not honor God by taking responsibility for what he has given, if we bury and kill his call over our life, we will be left out of the inheritance that he has called us to. Some of us, you know, it says that we we'll barely... You know, we'll, we'll kind of touch the fires of hell. Tichki will give and we'll come. That is what the Bible says. Some of us will not get an inheritance that we are supposed to get up there. This is what this is talking about. I think the other reason, one of the another ways to look at it is also, Jesus was also talking to the Jews. So what he was telling the Jews is, listen, you have buried my truth. You have misrepresented me for years. You have taken people away from me. At least this servant recognized the master. The Jews didn't recognize who Jesus was. They had forgotten who God was. Yes. The last thing I want to say is, what is the key takeaway from the parable? The key takeaway from this parable is nothing but good stewardship. Brothers and sisters, you and I, we are stewards of Christ on this planet. Okay? Whether it is our gift, whether it is our call, whether it is our anointing, whether it is our money, whether it is our relationships, we need to be good stewards. Okay, 1 Peter 4 verse 10 and 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength, of, with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Everything you and I have is given to us by Jesus. Okay, everything. You and I need to be good stewards of these gifts of grace. They aren't ours, they are of the Lord's. Okay. One of the things I want to ask you is, brothers and sisters, how you and how do you and I treat this planet that we live in? Okay. Yes, we are called to be stewards of our calling and of our relationships and all, but we are also our original calling is to take care of this earth. How do you and I take care of this earth? Do you litter? Yay, hey, guilty laughs. Yeah? Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. If we are the children of God, this earth is ours and we are, the, we, are, we are stewards of this earth. We need to use resources, we need to take care of this earth in the best way possible, in the best way that we can and not abuse it. Okay? And Revelation 21 and Isaiah 65 verse 7 and uh, sorry, Romans 8 verse 22 and 23 says, All creation is groaning in waiting for Jesus to come back and restore and heal it. Okay? We have a responsibility, we have a duty towards God's creation. So, be good stewards of your call, of your relationships, of your life, of this church and of this planet. Yeah, that is basically what God 
Uh, that is basically what Jesus was trying to say. That is a key point of this parable. Thank you so much for listening to me. It is 11 o'clock on the dot and I am done. Thank you so much. <laughs>